Swimoutlet.com delivers the best online shopping experience. With an extensive selection and the lowest prices, you're guaranteed to find the product you need. Here's what you get. Free shipping on all orders over $49. Free one to two day shipping on all orders over $99. All orders placed by 6 p.m. ship out the same day. Shop at Swimoutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. This is a special edition of the Morning Swim Show, a very special edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'm Jeff Cummings here with very longtime host Peter Bush, who, as many of you know, is leaving us in Phoenix for a position as an anchor in Fort Myers, Florida. Peter, before we had you uh, head off to Florida, we wanted to do kind of an exit interview just to kind of look back and, and get your thoughts on, on working here with Swimming World TV. So take us back to, to 2006 when Swimming World TV started. What got you involved with that? I had just moved up to Phoenix to be a news reporter here at the CBS affiliate, and Brent Runemeller, who I'd known from my childhood years, um, had told me that he wanted to do some video stuff and uh, get the get the website going in that direction. So, I don't, we both really started without knowing exactly how it would turn out, but we tried different things, and uh, it was definitely an experimental phase. Yeah. But it was, but it was a lot of fun, and I did that. I think it was for about a year or so, um, and then I went back and just was focusing on kind of the news reporting, and then, uh, you know, I knew at some point I'd like to come back. It just, it took the right situation, and we, we figured it out. Yeah, it was a year of just kind of feeling out where it would go and where it would lead you, and you, you know, you got to cover the U.S. Nationals in Irvine, got to go to, I remember I saw you at U.S. Masters Nationals, and you were... It was it was a big leap forward. I mean, you guys weren't just kind of you know dipping your toes in. You guys, I mean, excuse the pun, dove right in. I think people could tell that we were trying to do something different, which was great for the sport. That mm -hmm. that was the whole point from the beginning is to do a service to the sport of swimming, which did not get the kind of coverage even from inside the swimming media that we thought it deserved. So by starting, you know, a website with a video component dedicated to swimming to swim meets, to the athletes, to the coaches, um, just getting different content out there. You know, we were really trying to do more in-depth stories and trying to do some stuff um, at the beginning. Again, just feeling out what was going to be the format that would work on a larger scale. And that first year, you know, it was full of ups and downs, just as any startup, if you will, would, uh, it would be natural for. Um, went to some big meets, had a lot of fun. But, you know, it took a couple of years for us to figure out, okay, this is a format that we can mass produce and that will really work and do the kind of justice that we want to be done for the sport. Well, <clears throat> just having the opportunity to look back at some of these um, over the past few weeks or so while we were preparing for the show, I kind of was taken aback by, you know, not just how you've changed physically, but just how the swimmingworld.tv has developed. And let's take a look at some of uh, Peter's first efforts with Swimming World TV. Hi, I'm Peter Bush for Swimming World TV. In the first week of August, USA Swimming will hold its annual Summer National Championships. The meet marks the exact halfway point between Olympic cycles. I'm Peter Bush with Swimming World TV. We are at the annual conference for the National Interscholastic Swim Coaches Association better known as NISCA. TV visits it. USA Swimming Headquarters in Colorado Springs. We'll give you an inside look at the science they're using to stay ahead of the game and tell you what goes on behind the scenes. back to Irvine, California and Swimming World TV's coverage of the 2006 Summer National Championships. Let's give you a recap of day three's prelim session. And welcome back to Swimming World TV. If you are a college swimming fan, this is the best time of year for you. We've got the NCAA men's and women's college championships right around the corner. And we're going to talk about both today, give our predictions. It's a Wednesday and superstar swimmer Amanda Beard has a full schedule. And none of it has to do with swimming. Okay, Some schools don't even have 17 swimmers, let alone 17 All-Americans. That talent-rich pool was enough to earn Xavier Prep 2005's PowerPoint Championship. Well, that's about it. The rich get richer, apparently, in this year's women's recruiting class. Stanford and Arizona, the consensus top picks. We'll see you later. So from that, Peter, in 2008, evolved into the Morning Swim Show. Uh, I mean, I look back on that and think how far it's evolved from then. I mean, really, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we were 
we were really just kind of starting with the bare bones and, and you know, look at where we are now. I mean, looking back then, I mean, did you ever think it would get to this? Our first show, our first morning swim show, and I, I think it was even before you were a part of it, but the lights went out. Brent and I were taping. I'm sitting at the desk. Brent's doing stuff behind the scenes, and all of a sudden, boom, power surge. We were just so unprepared for what it would take to actually do a production of this scale every single day. Um, we didn't realize what's, what kind of voltage, you know, would all these <laughs> lights would cause. And the power just went out, and we just laughed. I mean, we were live, I think, on the phone with somebody. At the beginning, we were doing phone interviews. It wasn't until I think Brent just realized, and we all did, we're just going to have to make this more visual. And so bringing in, you know, interviews through Skype, uh, it really changed the game. But at the beginning, I mean, it was just prehistoric if we look back on it now. Yeah. But again, this is what happens when you have you know, an entrepreneurial spirit heading up something yeah. without a ton of investment money and just trying to make something happen. But I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with where we've taken it, with what we have to work with over the years and how we've put together what I consider to be a pretty you know, high quality production that's mass produced every single day that, you know, that really works. And it has evolved to the point where, you know, I go to swim meets and people are like, you know, they give us high praise for the show and they're always, you know, just really uh, complimentary about the fact that this is not something that, you know, the sport has ever had and it's just been really great to have and, um, you know, that's really great to hear. Uh, We've got a clip of that, uh, some of those early morning swim shows. It's, it, oh, boy. It, yeah, it's, it's a little bit kind of jarring to watch seeing where we are now, but um, let's, uh, let's all just kind of relive those moments. Okay, we are now live with our five-minute countdown. It is Monday, February 9th, 2009. Welcome to the morning swim show. I'm your host, Peter Bush, and we're broadcasting live from the brand spanking new Swimming World Studios in Phoenix, Arizona. We've made good use of our January break, preparing for a new and improved approach to the morning swim show. The first major change is that we'll be... Okay, you may be wondering, hey, are those guys at Swimming World freaking out right now? They just had a power blowout on their very first new and improved show. It's actually fun stuff. Get back into swimming. We got college championships coming up, and heck, world championships aren't too far away. So, Peter, a lot of interviews. I mean, it was hard to count. I almost started counting how many interviews you've done, and it's it's almost a thousand. I mean, really, over over the past six years. But looking back, do you have any any interviews or any people that you've interviewed that's the most memorable? Uh, there are certainly a couple that stand out, and we talked about this earlier. The interview we did with Jessica Hardy stands out to me over the years. This was. Um, I think it was it was either late 2008 or 2009, but it was her first interview after what had happened to her um, with the Olympic trials fiasco from 2008 when she was disqualified from swimming in the Olympics for testing positive for a banned substance. And here she is, you know, everybody wants to talk to her and get her side of the story or just find out what happened. And she decided to give her first interview to us on the Morning Swim Show. And I remember Jessica just being so uh, the way I would describe it is it was just so raw and you know in my opinion honest you know she was just you could tell it was just eating her alive she just felt so awful about what had happened but felt like so awful that nobody had heard her out or you know that she hadn't been able to tell her story right. and just the pain that was inside her um, it was pretty prevalent during that interview and I was so appreciative that she trusted us to, you know, to be a responsible format to share her side of the story. And as we all saw through, um, you know, objective panels, you know, she ultimately was cleared and you know, cleared of any wrongdoing and now has a good chance to make the 2012 Olympic team. But just interviews like that, that along with 
just seeing the side of people that I don't think a lot of you know, swim fans get to see, just how fun and thoughtful a lot of these swimmers and coaches are. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marcus Rogan, you know, Elizabeth Beisel, Missy Franklin, just how much we've seen the personalities of these people, you know, kind of in their own lives, away from the pool deck, and how fun they are. Oh, yeah. um, you know, Ryan Lochte, Nathan Adrian, we've had a lot of fun, and we've interviewed a lot of coaches, and you know, we've tried to do different things. I, I think one of the things I, I want to say to you is just how you, behind the scenes, kind of producing the show for me, have done just such a wonderful job of making sure people get to know not just the superstar coaches and swimmers but you know a master swimmer who's done something special or a coach or a high school kid i mean we we really tried to make it a show for everybody in the sport well that's you know that's kind of what we do at swimming world so i definitely you know wanted to make sure that we weren't just trying to make sure that we had a show where we were trying to get the super elite but just that everybody has a voice and has a story to tell and and um, just to throw right, that right back to you, I mean, you, you helped tell those stories really well. Yeah. Well, you know, every once in a while, you're, you're going to get an interview where you're just having a tough time. Either the person's not much of a talker or, you know, you just didn't bring your A game that day. But I can honestly say about 90% or more of our morning swim shows, I walked away going, you know what, we just did... We just did a good thing for the swimming world. Absolutely. And I've, you know, been sitting just a few feet away from you, you know, watching all these interviews and just really just, you know, sometimes I, I, I you know, am really close to pinching myself. It's like, did we really just get this person on the show? I mean, we've had a lot of great people on the show. Just kind of, you know, you ran down the list. Of course, there's that, that brass ring we never got. We never got Michael Phelps. But, um, you know, that was four years of, of, of a lot of, of trying and, and never really got to it. And um, I know even in, in these last weeks, you were, you were desperately trying to, to get him just to, just to chat with him. You know, nothing, nothing really, you know, serious. Maybe, you know, a question or two about what he's going to swim at trials. I'm a little disappointed that Phelps never made it on the show for, for various reasons. But uh, we tried. And I'm very happy, though, of the people we did get. I mean, honestly, every other major swimmer in the world, pretty much, we've had on the show, at least that they speak any bit of English. Yeah. I mean, but we've had, Ryan Lochte's been on the show a handful of times. We've had Dara Torres, Natalie Coughlin's been on a handful of times. We've had every major American swimmer except for Phelps. A few Australians, I mean, Eamon Sullivan's been on, Libby Trickett. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'm... Our reach was pretty strong, and I'm very proud of that. I gotta say, Peter, some day, like you said, some days it wasn't easy, but um, you know, you're a pro, and you always made it look easy. It's been a, a really great pleasure having you here, and we're gonna really miss you here. We're we're uh, we're looking forward to seeing how you do in Florida. It's gonna be fun for well, you. Well, thank you so much. It's been a great run here. I've really enjoyed my time. I appreciate Swimming World giving me the opportunity to stay involved in the sport that I love so much, and you know, helping to. Uh, blaze the trail in this unique path for Swimming World TV. And we hope that, you know, it continues with great success. I know you're going to do a great job. Thank you, Peter. Well, um, we don't want Peter to leave just yet, but uh, he's got to. But uh, we're going to show you some highlights from Peter over the years of the Morning Swim Show. Well, it made us smile when we were putting it together, and um, hopefully it'll make you smile as well, too, as we head off to our Memorial Day weekend here on the Morning Swim Show. We'll see you back here on Monday. The word is that you are an animal in practice. I think they mean that in a good way. <laughs> what is something that you have recently done that you were proud of in a workout? Paint the picture of what your ideal taper is like. I mean, when do you start? Is it something you can measure in time or in distance you do in, in practice? For people who have never seen you swim, I mean, what's your stroke like? Are you great underwater? Do you have a real long stroke? Are you a tall guy? You know, people are just hearing about you, so give us the scouting report. In just 100 meters, when it's long course, the race is usually won, like, in that last 30 meters. So you've got to be able sure. to finish to have a chance at the gold. Medal. Now, um, back in 2009, most people know, you came out and said that you were uh, sexually abused as a child, and that has led to some of your advocacy work. Tell us, mm -hmm. you know, about what you're doing. Clear something up for me. Are you done with college swimming or are you trying to get another year or so? Ted? Up? 
if they didn't believe me now, now they know. You're a water polo player at heart. How you doing? You're 200 free. Do you, do you still plan on swimming that, or do you think uh, you're just going to be a 100 guy from here on out? You obviously are very close with college swimming. 22 years at Arizona, built a great program. But college swimming, in some senses, is becoming an endangered species. How do we protect that? And how do you do that in a new role? Let's say Canada comes along and uh, makes you an offer you can't refuse, you know? A couple million to swim for them. What do you say? I get the feeling because you don't swim as many meets as a lot of the other big name swimmers, that sometimes people just kind of forget about you. They think, well, what happened to him? Is he still swimming? And then you pop up at the big meet of the year, you crank out a fast under free, and voila, you're on the next big international meet. So Andy, you're going to the World University Games. Do you expect to win the gold medal there in the Hunter Breast? I'm your host, Peter Bush. I'm your host, Peter Bush. I'm your host, Peter Bush. Peter Bush. Peter Bush. Peter Bush. Peter Bush. It's Peter Bush. So I'm Peter Bush reminding you one last time to keep your head down at the finish.